Hello and welcome back to the Football Chat, where today we're going to be running through 10 players who could earn themselves transfers from the 2022 Qatar World Cup. We are very close to the World Cup, aren't we now, Harry? Yeah, very, very, very nice. exciting indeed. We're going to look at some players who could earn themselves transfers. Now, I've seen this in the past, I think back to 2014, quite a few examples actually. You've got James Rodriguez, obviously the best player at that tournament. You've got players like Marcus Rojo and Enna Valencia. If you want some examples from other sort of international tournaments, the Euros in 96, we obviously saw a young Patrick Berger emerge with the Czech Republic team. He then got a move to Liverpool that summer. And Hal Robson Carnu, obviously for Wales in 2016, he was a big reason why they got to the semi final. And he actually got moved to the Premier League from the Championship off of the back of that. So pick up Hal Robson Carnu. But yeah, without further ado, let's get in to our 10. In at number one, we have Jonathan David. Now, of course, the Canadian striker, the 22-year-old, has been killing it at Lost Lille this season. Harry, do you want to give us some of his statistics? Because they are ridiculously I mean, good. He has been absolutely flying, especially in the league. Huh? 13 games, 9 goals and 3 assists for the young Canadian. And if he can carry that form, which he is going to do, into the World yeah. Cup... He could be really good for Canada. Yeah, clearly rated very highly, a 7.74 average foot mob rating. And for Canada, he's no slouch either. 34 appearances for the North American side, 22 goals. That's a fairly decent return, considering they've plus played some tough games in there, you know. North America, as much as people look at it as like a worse continent for football teams, you've still got Mexico, you've still got the US. Jamaica can always offer a challenge. You've got clubs like Panama who went to the last World Cup. They're certainly not easy games they had to play on the way to qualification. I think if you look at their group as well, Canada, Belgium, Croatia and Morocco are the three teams joining them in Group F. I think they can get through. Do you? I, I do. It's going to be very <sighs> tough. You asked me, I, I think Belgium will be able to top it. And I think it will be between Canada, Croatia and Morocco. I, I think this is genuinely spot. the toughest group. I think you could be wrong there. I think Belgium could be the shock here. Nah. But a lot of people say France, you know, they're going to be shockingly knocked out. I think Belgium this is, don't look as, aren't as strong as people think they are. This is Belgium's last year, I think, of their golden generation. I don't think they're going to flop hard, I do. Fair enough. I think they're going to flop really As hard. Canada, and then I maybe Canada and Croatia get through. get through. Do I think they'll get further than the further than the first knockout round? Not really. Well, yeah, it's likely they'd go through in second seed. They play the top of uh, Group E, which would be a tough match. So, yeah. But I do think if they can get through to round 16, yeah. who's saying they couldn't exactly. get through to exactly. the quarterfinals? Our pick at number two is Mohamed Salisu. The Southampton and Ghana defender, 23 years old, been doing very decent in the Premier League this season. 12 games, 3.4 tackles and interceptions per 90. Zero goals and zero assists, but that's all right, isn't it, Harry? Yeah, he is a defender, to be fair to him. And yeah. that tackle ratio, tackle and interceptions... Per 90 ratio at 3.4 is very, very good to say. Sensational, yeah. Hampton side, but it's fair to say, haven't done too well. just have to make a year. lot of tackles and interceptions, to very be fair. So. 6.97 average foot of rating Again, is very, yeah. very high. Yeah, considering Southampton have been on the end of a, a few bad results this yeah. season. He's only capped two times by Garner, so it's a bit of a rogue one. Because, in all honesty, we're not sure whether he'll start at the tournament or not. They've got a very strong side, Ghana. Just looking at some of the players in this team now. Inaki Williams recently declared for him. The same for Tariq Lamptey. He's now declared for Ghana. You've got Mohamed Kudus. You've got both Jordan and Andre Ayew. You've got Felix Afenya Gayan and, of course, Suleimana. Kamaldine Suleimana at Rennes. So a lot of, a plethora of talent, really. Yeah. Is there a place for Salisu in the side, do you reckon? I think there could be. I definitely think there could be. And all it takes, say, an injury or something. Well, yeah, I mean, at the moment, Daniel Armati usually lines up at centre half. I, mean, half, I so. would start Salisu over at Marty. You certainly would, but going into an international tournament, you're not going to play experience, potentially? I don't know, it'd be interesting. But if he does play, I think he will star. I think there's a good chance they could get out of the group. Now, obviously, they are in a group with Portugal, South Korea and Uruguay. And if you asked me a few weeks ago, I'd have said it's going to be very tough. South Korea now, though, they're not going to have Hyung Min Son. That yeah. does limit how good they are I by a significant amount. I think Uruguay... Incredibly underrated, but yeah. I don't think they've got... Like, the Darwin Nunes is probably going to start up front. Darwin He's good, but... Nunes. And he could have a brilliant tournament, but it'll be interesting to see. Portugal should top. They have got a brilliant midfield. Portugal, as you say, uh, yeah, sensational. I, I, we'll get on to them in just I a moment. I don't think Ghana can nick second there. Yeah, I think Ghana can make a good go of it. If they do that, then it's likely they'll probably... If they're second, they'll probably play Brazil. But... Yeah. 
You never know, do you? Never. You never know. But yeah, they could get a good result from that. On to the next one. Our pick at number three really doesn't need any introduction. It's Cristiano Ronaldo. Now, you might think this is a bit of a strange pick. You know, top ten players who could get a transfer at the World Cup. But if you think about it, he's not having the best time at Manchester United. I think this tournament could be perfect for him to springboard and move elsewhere, don't you? Very much so. And I think you are right. He has had a... Terrible starts as he from United. He's barely played and he, he's all been yeah. caught up in loads of controversy between him and Ten Hag, him and other players, you name it. And I think he does need to move away and the World Cup could be a perfect chance for him to do that. Yeah, it certainly could be. Just the nine games this season, when you see only three starts, mm. it really is in stark contrast to what you expect from Cristiano Ronaldo. One goal. One goal all season, that's mental. Zero assists and a 6.69 average football rating leaves a lot that's, to be that's, desired. That's obviously in the Premier League, obviously of course, he has scored yeah. in the Europa League. But yeah, but we haven't got those stats up on the board. They don't usually count because no. it's against some team from like the Swedish third division. Yeah, and of course Portugal, he is a, a very good goal scorer. 191 appearances, 191 caps, 117 goals. Yeah, that is pretty, that is pretty ridiculous. That is ridiculous. And a group that features Ghana, themselves, South Korea and Uruguay. As we said with Sally, so you expect Portugal to top that group. Yes, I think there'll be challenges on the way. I think Uruguay will play well. I think Ghana, as we say, could spring a surprise. But Portugal should top this group. And I think they'll win every game. Yeah, they should, probably. They certainly should. On to the next one. This next one, we are cheating a little bit. We've gone for Edson Alvarez. Now, you might wonder, how are we cheating there? Well, heavily touted with a move in the summer to Chelsea. It looks like, regardless of his performance at the World Cup, he will get a move. But I thought we'd include him here. Because I think he will perform well, don't you? Very much so, I think. Uh, not only in the area of AC, but also in the Champions League this season. He's looked yeah. really, really good for Ajax. And I'm sure he'll look good in the Europa League going forward but that's whether he does stay with Ajax obviously if he does yeah. get to move away he won't be in the Europa League going forward but do you think potentially them getting knocked out could tempt that move even more to Chelsea obviously 10 games in the Eredivisie this season 2 assists we'll no see, goals yeah. yet but yeah considering his defensive infield a very solid and 7.59 average football rating Kai tells you everything he, you need to know he's also quite experienced at the international level for a 25 year old 59 caps so far he's also got 3 goals and I think it'll be pivotal to how they get on in this tournament. If you look at their group, you'd expect Argentina to top it, but Poland and Saudi Arabia, they're teams they can beat. Now, Poland will offer even, a challenge. I Don't think, get me wrong, but... I think even Mexico could give Argentina a go. No, they certainly will. I don't doubt that. And I don't think Argentina's too big a jump for them to be able to close that gap. I think a really good day for them and a poor day for Argentina. And Mexico can certainly win that game. Top of the group would be beneficial because obviously they will play Group D. Where if they yeah. are if they are to get through, that's France and Denmark, Australia and Tunisia. You'd imagine France will top that. Denmark second, if they're t so if they're second in the group, it's likely they'll have to play France, which I think is a winnable game. That's a winnable game. Maybe. France were knocked out by Switzerland at I Euro mean, twenty twenty. Mex Mexico at their very best, but not only is now, but there's also a lot of our Mexican players yeah. that are very good. Between them, they could put together a World Cup run. I think they certainly could. Right. On to that next one. In at number five, we've got the LeBron James of soccer, Christian Pulisic. He hasn't got many minutes for Chelsea this season, but for the USA, you expect him to play a pivotal role. 52 caps for the United States of America, 21 goals in that time. The 24-year-old has done well to establish himself in the American national team, though, of course, he is sort of their best player, I think you could argue. There's some others in there that are good, but probably their best. Yeah, and on, on that trip getting that move, it's, it's, I don't like it as a Chelsea fan, because Pulisic has shown signs of, of promise at Chelsea. Mm. He has looked phenomenal. I mean, Lockdown I was Pulisic say, down, it was, like was, hazard, in, mate, was incredible. His goal against Man Not City, good, I remember but... one, is at mm. Stamford Bridge, was magnificent. Um, yeah, but, but it just really hasn't hit the ground running. It's been abysmal this season, the, hasn't the it? Blues and this season hasn't mm. been great either. Do you think he hasn't been playing left wing back a lot, which won't help? Yeah, but eleven games, three starts, a goal, yeah. one goal, one assist. It's not amazing, and a six point five six average football rank but isn't great. But I do great. think a good World Cup, good World Cup, would help him get a much needed move away. I think that's a very good chance that you say progress. They're in Group B, of course, England's group. Things we'll have to see. Well, no, England, England, Iran, that. USA, England. and Wales. It's going to be tough. 
Yeah, Iran, very, very good defensively. And, of course, do have players like Mehdi Taremi who could get them that goal just yeah. to get a result over the line. And Wales can somehow pull yeah. results well, together. Well, Gareth Bale for Wales is genuinely different gravy. Yeah. So it's not going to be easy. But if I was putting money on it, I think the USA will progress. Now, if they get through that, they've got to play Netherlands in the round of 16. And I think that is a winnable game. Well, or... Or Senegal, potentially. Or, or yeah, Ecuador or Qatar. If it's, if it's Ecuador or Qatar, I'd be back in the USA. If it's Netherlands, as I expect, though, a lot of people say Netherlands could go far this year. I don't think their team has changed that much. I think there's a good chance. If the USA had to play them, the USA I think would beat Qatar them. could get through, but that is a discussion for another day. It certainly is. Our next pick in at number six, we've got Jesper Lindstrom, the Eintracht Frankfurt winner. Winger, sorry, not winner. He's been doing very well. Of course, Europa League winner last Maybe season. He could be a winner at the World Cup. Imagine if Denmark won the World Cup. That, that would be, be ridiculous. The 22 year old, though, he's done well since he started playing for the first team. Six caps, one goal. It looks like he could start. Potentially a bench roll, but I think with the minutes he will get, he will do well. In the Bundesliga this season, 11 games, 9 starts, 5 goals and 0 assists. It's not terrible, is it? No, no, not at all. And if you look at their group, it shouldn't be too difficult. France will no. be a tough test, but I think Argentina and Tunisia shouldn't be a problem for Denmark, and they should finish P2. Yeah, and in quite comical fashion, actually, it's almost a direct copy of their group in 2018. Australia, Denmark, France, Aust all oh, in there. Tunisia, Australia. the only team that have no, come in. No, I said Argentina. I it's not Argentina, no. So Denmark, likely going to finish second, because Australia, they don't have a Tim Cale anymore to carry them through the tournament. And Tunisia, it's a miracle they're here in the first. I suppose if they yeah. take a point, they will be very, very happy with their showing. France, you'd imagine, will top it. France are very strong. But I think there's a good chance Denmark could top it. In I which mean, we case... Saw, we saw Denmark's incredible run at the Euro yeah. 2020. I mean, if they had, I, I think if they'd been on the other side of the draw and they hadn't drawn England, they could have even got to the final. Mm. But, yeah, I, I wouldn't count out Denmark... I think they could go quite far. No, and I think there's a chance they'd beat Argentina. A slim chance, but the point of this is players that are going to shock us and be able to pull off a big transfer. I think if Denmark could go far, it's going to be because of this guy's performances. So yeah, yes, but I can see him in the Premier League potentially if Maybe. he performs well enough to be interesting to see. Up next, we've got Jude Bellingham. What a player yes. Jude Bellingham is. The 19-year-old English superstar, hopefully... Gareth Southgate actually starts him at this tournament. You'd imagine he will, but you never know. We are relying on him starting today. 17 caps for England so far. Unfortunately, hasn't got a goal surprising yet. surprising me that. This tournament's going to change that. I'm telling you now. Three goals and assists in 12 games in the Bundesliga this season. He's it's been brilliant from Liverpool. He's been Dortmund's main man. He's carrying Dortmund, similarly to how Haaland and Royce have in recent years. A 7.66 average football rating is absolutely That's harsh sublime. Of course, no, sorry, I forgot about Anthony Dash. What a player he is. He should be starting for France. But for England, is it is an, it's it's an easy time. group. He is indeed. It is an easy group. Iran, USA, Wales. This should be we a should comfortable top. This top nine team. out of nine, and Jude Bellingham's going to yeah. lead us to World Cup glory. It's coming home, ladies and gentlemen. Round of 16, then. We'll be fate If we're top of the group, we'll be facing probably Senegal, Ecuador most likely. Could be Netherlands oh. if they have a tough oh. tournament. Oh. All winnable games there. It's a really nice path into the quarterfinals where France are a team I think we could beat. Or, as I just said with Jesper Lindstrom, I think we could even face Denmark there. And we've shown we can yeah. beat them as we did in the semi-finals. We all know how that ended, but this time it's going to be different. England for World Cup glory. We're going to win. On to the next one, though. Our eighth now is Daichi Kamada. This is a player that has absolutely stunned me this season. Didn't really know too much about him last year. Obviously was involved in Frankfurt's team as they went on to win the Europa League. And the 26-year-old has had a brilliant, brilliant season. Do you want to run me through some of his amazing stats? And in the Bundesliga alone, nine starts, seven goals, two assists, with a 7.6 mm -hmm. hour short rank. That's ridiculous. It's a contribution per start. That is, that's that's very, very that's good. absolutely ridiculous. In the UCL, it's, it's amazing as well. Six games, three goals, no assists, but a 7.41 average foot mob rating. In the attacking mid role as well for Frankfurt, absolutely brilliant numbers. And of course, he has helped guide the uh, the side into round 16 of the Champions League, which is still massive. Very close, but they pulled off some big problem. results. They did indeed, yeah. Big goals against the likes of Tottenham and Sporting. And that made a difference. Like, he's good at a club level, but he's also very, very good at an international level. Yeah, 21 caps, 6 goals so far for Japan. At the World Cup, 
it's a tough group, but it's a group they could do something with. They've got Costa Rica, they've got Germany, and they've got Spain. It's going to be tough to get it. It certainly is. Germany and Spain are the favourites. You'd imagine Costa Rica fourth, Japan third. But there's every chance this Japan side could pull off an upset. Now, Takafusa Kubo would have been a player that we put in here over Kamada potentially. But he is out for the tournament. I think that makes Japan's chances even lower. But I do think maybe a Kamada goal here, maybe a penalty. We know he's brilliant from the spot. A bit of luck and Japan could get out of this group. Yeah. I think the only place I could see for him going, like an improvement, I don't know if he would get a Prem move. I think maybe I a higher, think... but higher Bundesliga move, which don't get many of them, to be fair. I don't think that he will move in January, because Frankfurt have got Champions yeah. League football. But after that, I don't know, I could see your lads. I could see Aston Villa going in for him. I think it'd be yeah. a nice fit, potentially. He could work there. They will need him when they're in Europe. So. Yeah, maybe if there's an Atletico Madrid revolution going on, he could be a player they try and bring Very in much, right? to ignite that. Be interesting to see whether he could get a move. But right now, at least in the general transfer window, I don't think there's an improvement unless he has a really stunning World Cup. But I think he could do. So you never know. Our penultimate pick is Ismaya Saar, the Senegalese winger, 24 years old. I think he's going to have a really, really strong tournament. He's ripping up in the championship this season. 14 games, 6 goals, 4 assists and 7.32 average football rating. That's stunning so far. It's none less than you'd expect from him. The championship is, a, you know, a league below his level. As for Senegal, 36 caps, 10 goals. And I think this Group A is something he can really, you know, perform well in. What do you think? Very much so. I think his championship form is very good, saying that Watford have struggled, especially towards the they're start only, of the yeah, season. Yeah, they're only sixth in the league. So Bilic up, is now in charge picking of Picking up form under Slavin Bilic now, and mm. his Maestar looks to be back to his best. Also, we know he's perennially proven. We know he's got the ability at international level. And as yeah. you say, looking at a World Cup group, this is definitely a group that Senegal could top. Yeah, and uh, it'll probably play on the right of a three up front. And I, I know they don't have a great striking options. I imagine Boulay Dia will start up front. But with Mane on the left, Saar on the right, I think that as a front three is quite a dangerous prospect, even if they don't have the best striker. I, I thought you were playing, no, I thought you weren't. I didn't realize you were playing Mane left wing. Oh, right, yeah. Why not playing up front? But... That would be strange yeah, if Mane got dropped. Do look very good. They've got play, really good players yeah. up and down the pitch. And like Ecuador, Netherlands, Qatar. It's a group they can definitely I think do well. Maybe Netherlands who give them a run for their money. Yeah, Ecuador, Qatar should be easy games. If they get second, I think it's be tough from there because they'll play England. If they get first, if they can beat Netherlands at the top of the group, they've okay. got a really USA. nice game against either USA, Wales or Iran, which is a, a easy game for the Senegal. Mm. I think that I think that's a no really nice draw. Well, of course, Outside no game is easy, but well, even, I, don't, I don't think a game against Ecuador is you know any easier than a game against the US. Oh, no, no, Ashmore, I mean, like, or Iran or Wales. Or Iran. Group, or Wales. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah, of course. Like Senegal, Qatar should be a formality. But... Senegal, they should be aiming to top this group. I think they can. I think th- if I was going to say any bold prediction this year, it's that Senegal could be the first African nation to and ever win it. If but we, that's quite if bold. we looking at where is my son moved to, yeah. probably would be a prem move. You'd imagine so, but I do think a big international tournament like this is a chance for everywhere across the world to see his talents, even if it's just a move to say Villarreal. Or, you know, an Italian side, I think it could suit the Italian yeah. league well. He'd be, a, you know, a burst, an injection of pace in a league that's a little bit slow at times. Oh, that's another place where he could absolutely flourish with teammate Sadio Mane. But yes, on to the final one now. The final player in our list is Ecuador central midfielder Moises Caicedo. Obviously, he is at Brighton. His domestic side is Brighton, playing in the Premier League this season. And what a campaign the young man has had. The 21-year-old has, scored tw- has played 12 games, scored a goal, no assists so far, but he is a more defensive player. 7.31 average football rating. It's absolutely stunning, isn't it? I mean, yeah, it's been phenomenal for Brighton yeah. this season. And I think it's really good to see you know players of nationalities we're not used to seeing in the Premier League really shine on the big stage. And if he can do it in the Premier yeah. League, I'm sure he can do it in the World Cup. Well, yeah, I think people are kind of forgetting about Ecuador. They're sleeping on him a little bit. I mean, we just mentioned there Senegal should get through easily. But this is a, a golden generation for Ecuador. I mean, if you look at it, Moises Quesado, Piero Hincapi, Enna Valencia still kicking about. Blimey. They've got Purvis Estupanan. 
Fantastic left back. A lot of Brighton players, actually. I think Sarmiento or Saramiento or someone like that it also plays Brighton. They've got a really decent side right now, and I think there's a chance the problem is, Ecuador could do something here. I don't know. This is my worry. Is that Ecuador look very good, yes, but can they topple Netherlands and Senegal? I don't think so. I think Netherlands could be a step too far, but I don't think Senegal is. But then I would say that for Senegal, Netherlands isn't a tenth step too far. So is there in every chance that maybe Netherlands drop points at Senegal and, you know, get knocked out on goal difference here if Ecuador maybe, can win two of their maybe. games? I don't, I don't know. know. But there's every chance the Netherlands have a bad tournament. You never know. I mean, and I do Senegal think... could be worse than we think they are again. Yeah. Certainly can. If Ecuador, if there was somehow they could top the group, I think they could easily then get through to the quarterfinals, which would obviously be the furthest the country's I'd ever like gone. I think this is maybe a bit of a bias, but I think any whoever finishes second at this group will yeah. most likely play England, and I would think they would struggle. Yeah, Ecuador's best chance here is coming second and hoping England don't finish yeah. top. But yeah, 25 caps, two goals for Moise Caicedo. <laughs> I think the most likely destination is probably Chelsea. We've mentioned him a lot today. Edson Alvarez for Chelsea. We've mentioned Pulisic, obviously, leaving Chelsea. Ronaldo's another one that could go to Chelsea. I I hope not. not. But most case, I know, it seems likely. Four boss grand potters there now. Chelsea are in need of central midfielders, as we've highlighted with Edson Alvarez. I think a move for the two of them in January, especially if they have good World Cups, doesn't seem out of reach. I think that's why we're going to call today's video. Brilliant little list. If you have enjoyed, get involved in the comments down below. It's a bit of a different one. We don't usually put in all these little jump cuts and stuff. We've got a little bit edgy today, a lot of editing for Harry. But yeah, hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you all very much for watching today. And we'll see you next time. See ya.